are nearing the end of the 2024 MLB regular season, and Paul Skeens probably just secured the NL Rookie of the Year with his girlfriend in attendance all the way in New York as Aaron Judge. I'm just going to say this. He might have just had his worst game of all time. Red Sox players are not happy at all with Kenley Jansen, and uh, he's not even with the team anymore. J-Ram Jose Ramirez, he is literally staring down a 40-40 season. It would just be the seventh time in Major League Baseball history that's happened. Baltimore's offense is coming together at just the right time, and Otani, he's getting dangerously close to the Triple Crown. Only one man stands in his way. We'll talk about it. Usually we take Sundays off, but if you guys appreciate the grind, do me a favor, leave a like, subscribe so you don't miss out on any playoff action coming soon, and let's get into the recap. Actually, wait, don't forget to use code FUZZY on SeatGeek and Underdog Fantasy. Okay, the e-begging is out the way. Now it's time to start talking baseball. Oh man, I feel so bad for ha Sung Kim. So ha Sung Kim, who has been playing shortstop for the Padres the last year and a half, he is officially out for the season with shoulder surgery. And the reason why I'm so bummed for him is because one, this is the best Padres team we've seen in quite some time. I would have loved to see him in the playoffs on the biggest stages. He's also gonna be a free agent after. He's probably gonna have a buyout after the season. He can do that. But anywhere from 17 to $20 million sounds reasonable. Now that he's got this shoulder injury, I don't know if he's gonna buy out or not. He probably is, just throwing it out there. But yeah, his season is over. The Padres have already clinched a playoff spot, so this next game is all about the Diamondbacks. They cannot lose this game. Eduardo Rodriguez, he knew it. Four scoreless innings. He's back out for five. He started with a strikeout, so things are looking good, but then he allowed a walk and a base hit. He got pulled. He looks surprised that he was taken out, but Kevin Ginkle, the threat is over. He got the job done. Randy Vasquez, he was cruising as well. If you guys don't remember, he came in the Juan Soto trade along with Michael King and others. He made it through five no-hit frames. So this leadoff, Corbin Carroll double breaks it up. Arizona, they're in business. Walker, he does strike out, but they deploy a double steal. Randy battled back though. Vasquez, he got Lourdes to chase and he went six brilliant innings on just one base hit. Manny Machado took away a go-ahead double from Randy Grichuk, if that gets by him, it's probably one nothing snakes. To the ninth we go, it's still nothing nothing. AJ Puck, he's essentially been Randy Johnson out the pen since being traded from Miami. Are you kidding me? Higashioka also came on over in the Soto trade. A two-run home run, his 17th of the season. Brandon Lockridge, the rookie, is officially on the board. That's his first Major League home run. He's also a speedster, so he's got some tools. AJ Puck, the nightmare appearance is over. Scott McGuff took over, and this ball is over the fence. Donnie Barrels, Donovan Solano has a 115 OPS plus on the season as the Diamondbacks drop a huge game. You cannot lose that game. The Snakes fall to 13 and 17 over the last 30, and this has kind of been a depressing way to end their season considering they were the best team in baseball for a two or three month stretch. They were unbeatable for a while. All Diamondbacks fans can do now is pray to the baseball heavens that the Brewers can clutch up and beat the Mets because Arizona has lost two in a row. The Mets are trying to avoid losing three in a row. Tobias Tobias Myers was almost perfect as the follower. That is a starting pitcher that comes in for two, three, four innings after they use a relief pitcher as an opener. Tobias went four innings, one hit, five strikeouts. Quintana was really good for the Mets. He's got a solid scoreless streak going and it just got snapped. Joey Ortiz, he threw his bat at the ball, a two run single. He just dunked it in. Tobias and the Brew Crew bullpen combined for eight innings, just one base hit. The Mets pen could not say the same as Reed Garrett. He was painful to watch and he's been painful to watch for the last two or three months. Just the complete lack of command. Willie Adamas had an RBI. Joey Ortiz was handed his third RBI on a silver platter. That was a bases out of walk. Ended up 6-0 Milwaukee after Andrew Monasterio put it in play. So the Mets are shut out. They're held to two base hits. They've lost three games in a row. But thankfully, they're still tied with the Diamondbacks for that third wild card spot. Wait, hold up. One more team we have to talk about. If the Braves don't win this game, they'll still be tied with the Mets and the Diamondbacks. Seth Lugo and Ronaldo Lopez are making their final starts of the regular season. Ronaldo missed a lot of action with that shoulder issue. He had multiple strikeouts in the first back-to-back -back strikeouts. And then Harris, he snatched a Salvador Perez base hit. So a clean first for Lopez. Kansas City did go up by one in the third when Jorge Soler kind of embarrassed himself. I mean, it's still a double. Good for him. But he watched it for way too long and it didn't even leave. He probably gets to third base if he was running out the box. Ramon, he dribbled it to Lorenzen, and Lorenzen went to the camera. Well, a game-tying error as Ronaldo Lopez had seven strikeouts over five, make it eight and nine strikeouts over six dominant innings. I cannot believe that he was on the Guardians last year, and then the Braves said, hey, come over here for three years $30 million. One of the best contracts in ball because he's got a two ERA, 146 strikeouts and 134 innings, only $10 million a season. It's 1-1 in the ninth. Travis Darno, 
He walks it off! If you guys have been watching for a while, you know I usually start with the walk-offs, but I had to save this walk-off to kind of build the tension. His 15th home run, talking about Travis Darno, gives the Braves sole possession of second place. We shall see if that holds up. Skeens bump day. Here it is. He's got a 1.99 ERA on the dot. So if he stumbles a little bit, obviously that sacred sub two ERA will be no more. 100 miles an hour with movement against Juan Soto. It's not easy to make Juan Soto look jumpy. He then got Judge as well. That one on the slider. Yasmani Grandal. When he knows, he knows. Paul, he's out after two innings. They Again, they're trying to monitor his pitch count just like the White Sox are doing with Garrett Crochet. Paul ends his rookie season with his girlfriend, Libby Dunn, in attendance. I know Baby Gronk is punching air. By the way, it's probably the last time I'm ever going to use that joke, but Paul ends his rookie season with a 1.96 ERA and 160 strikeouts and 133 innings. I think that he's won it, but again, a lot of Jackson Merrill fans are saying it's not over yet. Nick Gonzalez yanked out another home run, 420 feet on that tank. Pittsburgh, they kept on cooking. Billy cooking. Billy Cook with the two-run home run. They hit four home runs off of Luis Hill. The fifth came after this Jazz Chisholm Jr., no doubt, or Jazz went to the second deck. That was the first hit all day for the Yankees. He's got 24 home runs and 40 stolen bases. Wait, actually, this was the fourth home run. Number four was Jared Triolo, Big Tree. They make it a six spot off of Luis Hill. His ERA ballooned to 3.5, which is still pretty good, but I don't know if that cost him Rookie of the Year. Juan Soto, he got some cheers. Then he probably deserved to get some boos because he had an RBI to make it 6-3, then got thrown out trying to stretch it with judge coming up next don't do that one in the playoffs please don't nick york in new york off the foul pole that's five cannonballs for the buckos aaron judge yeah he had five all right five strikeouts 0 for 5 with 5k's we call that a platinum sombrero as a roll this chapman finishes out the save now one more thing we have to talk about anthony rizzo he's going to be out for quite some time with a fractured Finger, you've got to be kidding me. Now, he does play much better defense than Ben Rice, and he was batting 365 the last week. He's also been great for the Yankees, and the two times he's made the postseason with them, Ben Rice does have more pop. He's got the exit velocities, and he does walk, but the defense, it's not even close. I'm hoping that Rizzo is going to be okay in a few weeks. Tristan, one more home run for Mr. Costas before the season ends. Cutter Crawford, he was given the lead. But uh, the trend the last few months is he's going to give up that lead pretty quick. Junior Caminero, he somehow pulled an outside slider over the monster. That kid has power for days. He got another on the board with the exact opposite of an RBI, kind of just a swinging bunt. Jonathan Aranda, he found a hole in RBI the other way. Cutter's season started so well. He was the best pitcher in baseball for the first month-ish, and he knows diving. Poor guy, he's clearly going through it in the dugout. He has 16 losses now. He allowed two earned runs total his first five starts. Then he went on to have a five-year rate over his next. 28 starts and a near 6.7 ERA since the midway of July. Josh Lowe, he had a liner to center. That's a two-run base hit, so that all but wraps up this game. As Shane Boz, he was pretty good. I'll tip my cap to him. He struck out seven as the Rays win 7-2. Now, one more story about the Red Sox. Kenley Jansen, he was sent home early by Alex Cora, and a lot of Red Sox fans are saying, don't blow this out of proportion. He's injured. He's not going to play the rest of the year. Just send him home. While other teammates are saying that it's not surprising that he went home. They're not happy and they're basically saying that Kenley Jansen has been aloof and not a great teammate since he's been with the Red Sox. So what do you guys make of that story? It's not great going into a free agency if you're asking me because again Kenley he's going to a brand new team he's not going back to the Red Sox so we've already seen a lot of American League playoff teams lose over the course of this recap but uh the, the Astros did not because of course they're not losing a lot heading to October Zach Dezenzo his family's in attendance that's an RBI off his knuckles Justin Verlander he's back out where it all started back in 2005 is that Travis Hafner that is pronk he got him to strike out a few times but you're not gonna get J Ram number 39 he's got 30 nine home runs and 41 stolen bases. Justin Verlander is just not the same guy anymore at 41 years old. I'm hoping that he somehow finds that fountain of youth before October, but we shall see. The Astros, they were able to tie it on a base. as to walk to Singleton and Manzardo could not pick this for Rokio. <laughs> Yeah, step into the throw, my guy. Please make the throw. It's 4-2 Astros. 4-3 Astros on J-Ram's third RBI, a sack fly. That basically ended it because nothing happened for either team after that. JB ends up going six. Both bullpens were completely stingy. Some guy named Sean Dubin or Dubin picked up the save. Good for him. Uh, the Yankees, they officially clinched the best record in the American League. Listen, 
I don't know if Brian Ramos is good or not, right? But hey, that's a home run, his third of the month. And look at that, it's raining pretty good down in Comerica and that did not bother Sean Burke at all. Sean Burke has showed some nasty, nasty stuff over his first three career starts. He picked up five strikeouts through three innings. He ended up with six over five scoreless. He's only allowed three runs while striking out 19 hitters over his first 20 innings. Andrew Vaughn, he secured an insurance run and we know that he's already in the 20 home run club. They have another Andrew, Benny Biceps, in the 20 home run club. He ties a career high. I'm so happy that I've been able to call him Benny Biceps because since early August, he's batting 280 with 12 home runs and 33 RBIs and 42 starts. The White Sox, they shut out the Tigers of all teams. The Guardians lost. The Royals lost. The Yankees lost. The Tigers lost. The Phillies, it's definitely feeling like a foot off the gas day for a lot of teams across baseball, or maybe I'm just making excuses. Mackenzie Gore, you will not believe this stat. The dude was gross, right? Six innings without a single run allowed. Three base hits, nine strikeouts. He now has a 3.9 ERA. He's the first qualified national starting pitcher to have a sub four ERA since 2019. Zach Wheeler, he wants that Cy Young. He was matching Gore pitch for pitch when the opposite field merchant struck again. I mean, when you're six foot six and all-time talented, it's probably a good idea to try and go up the middle or away. James Wood with the two-run oppo taco. He's got nine home runs, 14 stolen bases, a 125 OPS plus his first 78 games. Wheeler, he was still really good. 11 strikeouts. He has a two and a half ERA with 224 strikeouts. Who's going to win it? Him or Chris Sale? TT? Trey Turner. He just tied it with his 21st home run. We have a brand new ball game and we kind of had a chippy ending. Bryce Harper, he was struck out by Jose Ferrer. I think that's how you say it. And Jose was staring him down. I think it's because Bryce Harper was looking at Caber Ruiz. They were talking about framing or something like that. I don't know, but the bench is emptied. James Wood, he had a triple later and Caber, he had an RBI bloop. My friend broke it open. I don't know if I'm going to do that very much over the next few years, but Gallo with the most Gallo month ever. He's got five home runs, 13 RBIs and 16 starts. That's really good, right? He's batting 146 with 21 strikeouts and 55 at bats. But the good thing is he's six foot five, so he can help out with this Nazim Nunez high throw. Then he picks it to end the game. The Phillies have lost two in a row. They're in danger of being swept by the Nationals heading into the postseason. The Dodgers, um, they won by a lot, guys. That offense is seeing beach balls down in cores. Otani, he needs five hits to secure the batting title. All he has to do is tie Luis Arise, and he is still number one in baseball. He does settle for a single, no damage in terms of run scoring, but here's some run scoring damage. Enrique Hernandez, he uncorked for a long three-run home run. Ezekiel Tovar, he crushed a pitch as well, and that just went one feet shorter, I think. Enrique went 430. Tovar went 420. 29 Tovar is just so good. Teoscar, that is a brand new career high. 33 home runs for the veteran. Yoshinobu Yamamoto, he struck out six over five, no walk. So he ends his rookie season with 105 strikeouts and 90 innings with a three ERA on the dot. Otani, that's his second and final base hit of the night. He went two for five, but at least he stole his 58th bag. Shohei, he's batting 310. Luis is at 314, so he needs Luis Rice to play today. Go 0 for or like 1 for 5, and Otani has to collect three or more base hits in four or five at-bats. Chris Taylor and Gavin Lux, they both had three base hits, so just do that, Otani. Taylor and Lux both secure RBIs on their third base hit as well. Max Muncy, two runs on one swing. This is a double. He's hitting every emote possible at second base, and this game is sending us to Wrigley. I say that because Kyle Hendricks, he's one of the most popular pitchers in Cubs history. He just went seven and a third shutout in his final game with the Cubs, and he was vital to the Cubs winning in 2016. Yes, I have PTSD, but I'm still going to talk about it. He was so good versus the Dodgers in the 2016 championship series. All 11 years spent with Chicago, by the way, a 3.1 ERA from 2014 to 2020. We're not going to talk about the last few seasons. Dansby, he laced a leadoff double in the Eighth inning, yes, we're in the eighth. Bellinger, he skied one to shallow center. Dansby had to hold, but it drops, and Bellinger got to second on the throw in. They intentionally walked Seiya Suzuki. Izak, his first ever pinch hit hit right there is with the bases of nobody out. That's all you need. He found grass. Ellie, that's a clutch throw home, so he does save a run, only to have Pete Cromstrong belt one up the gut. So it's 2 0, 3 0. Another pinch hit. RBI, this time Mike Talkman didn't have to do anything. One of the easiest at-bats I've ever seen. He was walked on four pitches. Porter Hodge looks disgusting. One of the most underrated relievers in baseball. He's one out away. Spencer Steer to the hole. Dansby got there. An absolute seed, and the umpire robbed us of mayhem down in Wrigley. It was an easy out call. He called him safe. It was overturned. The guy delayed the hype. But again, Porter Hodge, nine saves, 
a 1.8 ERA. By the way, I do want to show some love to the Reds rookie, Rhett Loader. Louder, I'm botching that every time I say it. I forget how to say it every time I see his name. Five more scoreless innings. He's not a big strikeout guy yet. I think that he's going to get there. He's allowed four runs total his first six starts. That's really impressive. The Marlins have been embarrassing the Jays up in Toronto. 15-5 to the day before. They win fairly easy again in this one. Jonah Bride knocked in Xavier Edwards and Griffin Conine, the former Jays prospect. He drove in another on an RBI double. Nathan Lukes, well, at least it's spelled Lukes. It's actually Lucas. That's his first career home run. He also had a pretty good defensive play later on. Don't miss it. Base is loaded for Dane Myers. Remember, he was out after he broke his own hand hitting a wall or something like that, or a bench. He missed the grand slam by an inch. It hit the very top of the wall. Johnny Pereira, he had an RBI through the infield, and Dane, he's thrown out trying to go home, but that was a great throw out the hand of Lucas. Dane, imagine if that first ball left. This one's a three-run jack off the railing. He could have had a two-home run, seven RBI day. Instead, he has to settle for five RBIs. What a bum. I still cannot believe that this sack fly means that Paul Goldschmidt has 63 RBIs, just a very forgettable season for Goldie. Lamont Wade Jr. got it back for the Giants. Everyone was up a base. Gerard, he put it in play, and Mason win. He couldn't quite get his body in front of it. That ball deflects, and another run scores. Patrick Bailey has an RBI single. He then stole second base, and because he got to second, he can score easy on this Casey Schmidt double. Now, each team traded an extra run, so it's 5-2 in the seventh. Goldie, he started a rally with a double. Burleson got on as well, and Donovan made it three Cardinals on in a row. That is a two-run gap shot, and Jordan Walker, he completes the comeback with a first pitch hack at the sinker. It's 5-5. The Giants are giving Brett Wisely some reps versus lefties, like tough lefties to end the season. He laid down the bunt, and Libertor threw it into right field. Okay, all right. Tyler Fitzgerald, he's fast, fast, so he's going to score. Spencer Bivens gets the save, and for the first time in 2024, the Giants have beaten the Cardinals. Ryan O'Hearn and the side pieces in that Orioles lineup are heating up over the last few days. He has two home runs his last 24 hours a new career high with 15 home runs. He also has a 120 OPS plus. Emmanuel Revere had a monster day as well. He socked, and I mean socked, a two-run home run, a 445-foot mammoth home run right there. Ali, he makes it 5 to nothing on this swing, but Emmanuel Revere, he wanted all the shine. He has two extra base hits already. Give him three. His third extra base hit is his second home run of the day. Santander, a fantastic sliding catch and throw to double up the Minnesota Twins. The Twins players should be completely embarrassed themselves. They owed Twins fans just 105 wins next year for what they have done over the last few weeks. The Orioles, they went with the bullpen game. They win 9-2. 17 runs were scored total down in Anaheim as Nathaniel Lowe kickstarted the game with a no-doubter immediately after. I mean, immediately after the Angels. They took the lead. Three runs on some small ball. I'm not going to show that. Gustavo Campero, he sent one out. A three-run home run for his first career tater. And look at Nico Cavadas. He left the yard as well. They go back to back. It's 7-1 Halos. No chance that they didn't win, Right? Right? Wyatt tattooed a baseball. He wins rookie of the year unanimously if he plays like this from May on, not even just the last few weeks. That's eight home runs in September. Nathaniel Lowe, eh, I mean, RBI double makes it 8-4, still way out of reach. Uh, is that Jonah Heim, the catcher, laying out an RBI triple? It is. It's 8-5. Then Lowe is given another RBI, just on a silver platter. Here's a base, is on a walk. It's 8-6. It's all up to Jonathan Ornelas. Gustavo Campero giveth and Gustavo Comparo taketh away his, oh man, it's, it's, it's three score, three score on the awful, awful throw. Kirby Yates, he's not going to give up the lead. 33 saves, a 1.17 ERA. The Rangers make their biggest comeback of the year. Yeah, this is one of the worst Angels teams I've ever seen. Probably is, actually. We got some haymakers in this final game. The Mariners and the A's were trading big swing after big swing. Cal Raleigh's up to 33 home runs, 90 RBIs. I need two RBIs for Cal today so he can get into that triple plateau. Josh Rojas stepped in with the bases loaded, and two are going to score on this flair center field. Brent Rooker, a.k.a. Mini Judge. Goodbye baseball. He's got 39 home runs, 112 RBIs, and a near 170 WRC+. Plus. Tyler Soderstrom, he somehow got this baseball to go the other way. He's got nine home runs and a near 120 OPS+. Plus. The A's are building something pretty fun with that lineup. They just have to get some pitchers. I like the bullpen as well. Skipping to the seventh, Luke Rayleigh, he jolted a double to left field. J-Rod got the green light to score from first because Seth Brown, he had some trouble in left field. The ball just could not find his leather. Uh, the Mariners are in trouble as well. Two are on for Shea. We know he's got some pop. We call him Shea Bangaliers. 
29 home runs and 80 RBIs. He also has an absolute laser cannon arm behind the dish as a catcher. His three run home run is going to win it. There's no way that Luke Rayleigh catches 100 miles an hour out the hand of Mason. Are we tied again? Luke, he uses that elite bat speed to catch a barrel. We go to the 10th inning. Justin Turner, the 40 year old, he wins it. Okay, that's a little bit disrespectful. He's not 40 just yet. He turns 40 in November, but the almost 40 year old did come out and say after the game that he does want to play next season. So he will be 40 next year. The Mariners, they walk it off. That does it for today's recap. I hope that you all enjoyed. This was a fun one. We are getting so close to playoff baseball. I'm so ready for it. I should be going to a few games, so make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss out. Enjoy the rest of your day, and enjoy the web gems. 2-2 two -two pitch hit on a bounce, and a diving stop at second. Schneider pops up, throws to... Minnesota out, softly hit in the infield. Gonzalez with the charge, the bare hand. Oh, and a nice... The ground ball, Acuna on top of it with a backhand, and the throw retires on the ground. We have to move for Jacob Wilson on to second.